From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. What are you doing lying around the hospital? This is Dave Blaine, Johnny. Are you here in Los Angeles? No, I'm in Boston still. What happened? I was with Mrs. Parsons this afternoon, trying to find out what happened to her husband. She missed a turn in the road. How is she? Is she all right? She was killed, Dave. Oh, good Lord. Johnny, what can I do to help? Nothing, Dave. Nothing much to do now. Parsons is back, and... Well, now he's back, I'll wrap it up. Johnny? What is it, pal? She was a pretty nice person, Dave. I saw her die. Tonight, and every weekday night, Bob Bailey and the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to the Eastern Casualty and Trust Company, number 25 Yardley Boulevard, Boston, Massachusetts. The following is an accounting of expenditures during my investigation of the Calicles matter. Item 3, 26 cents for a package of cigarettes which the night nurse at St. John's Hospital bought for me. She also brought in a sedative. That was the last thing I remembered until about 5 o'clock in the morning. Look out! Look out! Mr. Dollar. Look out! Mr. Dollar. Look out. Shh. Hey. Here. Oh. You've got a bad dream. Yeah. Yeah, I guess. Well, you just lie down. You, you. You need some rest. Yeah. Can I get yeah. you anything, Mr. Dollar? Some water? No. No, sister. No, no, thank you. What's your name? I'm Sister Amadea. You. You weren't here when they brought me in. No. Now you just go back to sleep. Uh, sister, wait. Yes? I like to talk to you about it. Of course. You mean the accident? Yes. Yes. Uh, all of it. I, I'd feel better. Well, we want you to do that. Certainly. I came to Los Angeles for an insurance company back east. Mm -hmm. We had a report that a big executive in a stock firm out here was missing. I see. A man named David Parsons, junior partner with his father in the stock and bond business. Oh, yes. I've heard of the Parsons family. I talked to a man named Ecker, old Mr. Parsons' secretary. Mm hmm Ecker took me out to see the old man. He was pretty nasty. Wouldn't talk much about his son being gone for ten days. Then I met David Parsons' wife. I told her I thought the matter should go to the police. She agreed with me. But later on this afternoon out by the ocean, she said she expected him to come back. She called the house and... They said David Parsons had come back. Oh. It was a strange afternoon, sister. I mean, we sat in the sand and talked about these things. I could have fallen in love with her. Maybe I did. I'll never know. Sister Amadea. Oh, Mr. Dollar, you're more shaken up than you think. I'll, really, you should... I'll never get used to things like this. Now you just sleep, Mr. Dollar. Go on, now go to sleep. The world becomes very heavy sometimes. I'll just go to sleep. Item four, $14.95, one night in the hospital. When I got back to the Beverly Hilton, I bought a copy of the morning paper, ordered some lunch, and sat down to read about my accident. An unidentified woman was killed. An unidentified man was slightly injured in a car crash on Sunset Boulevard the afternoon before. No names, no details, no nothing. Strange. But even stranger was the appearance of Robert Ecker, old man Parsons' secretary at my door. Then I didn't know why his eyes were red-rimmed. Hello, Dollar. How do you feel? Oh, all right now, I guess. Come in. This whole thing's pretty terrible, Dollar. I... I just stepped up to see how you feel. Is, is there anything I can do for you? No, no, nothing, thanks. Mr. Parsons wanted you to know that he's concerned for you. Tell him I'm okay. How are things there? Young Mr. Parsons is pretty broken up. He's really back then? Oh, yeah. Well, then, I'm just about through out here. Could I see him? 
Mr. Parsons thought you'd want to. Yes. Expense account item eight, $178, airplane ticket, back to Hartford. Item nine, $43, hotel and board for two days in Los Angeles. Item ten, $6, cab fare. My plane was scheduled to leave at nine o'clock that night. I checked out about four in the afternoon and went directly to the home of David Sr. He looked a little ashen when I came in, but his temper hadn't improved much. He pointed a crooked finger at me. I've got this to say to you right now, Dollar. If you hadn't insisted on talking to her, she'd be alive today. She wouldn't have been with you driving that car. If she hadn't been forbidden by you to see me, we wouldn't have had to drive around in a car. You have a drink around here? Right there. I didn't come here to argue with you anymore. My job was to find your son. Evidently, he wasn't lost. Hecker told me I could meet him here about this time. You're pretty free with my whiskey. You can afford it. You want one? Oh, I got a jigger before every meal, that's all. Cheers. Well, am I early or what? David will be here any time now. Have any arrangements been made yet? You'll have to ask uh, Ecker about that. I don't know. I'd like to send some flowers, something. That's always the logical gesture. This is Mr. Dollar, David. Come in. It's my son, David. The man in the black suit wasn't what I expected in the way of David Parsons, Jr., somehow. He was tall and rangy, almost athletic. He had a good sunburn, a pair of square shoulders. I would have read him for an advertising man or a pro ball player. Certainly not for the investment brokerage business. We shook hands, he smiled wanly and lit up a cigarette. Dad tells me you've been looking for me. That's right, Mr. Parsons. Where have you been all this time? Oh, I took a freighter out of Los Angeles and rode it up to Oregon. Just a whim. Wanted to be alone and do some thinking. How come no word? Oh, that's a whim, too. Are you trying to get into my personal life? No, no. Just curious again. Well, here's some reports I have to make out. If you'd sign them, I'd appreciate it. Go ahead, sign them. Let them go. Sure, sure. I have a pen. Okay. Fine. Thank you. Satisfied, Dollar? Completely. Uh, what ship did you take up there? Ship? Uh, the boat to Oregon. Oh, the uh, Laureen B. Wintermaker Timber Company ship. Oh, sure. Well, I'm glad you're okay. Thank you for your cooperation. I went back to my hotel, checked in once more, canceled my airline reservations, and put in a call to Robert Ecker. He wasn't in his office. A little arguing got me his home number. No one answered. I went out and spent $25, item eight, to rent a car. I drove it over to Ecker's apartment address. He wasn't in, so I waited. A half an hour later, he drove up, ran into his apartment for about a minute and a half, came back out and got into his car. When he pulled into traffic on Wilshire, I was one Buick behind him. He finally stopped at a place on Olympic Boulevard, the Parkway Funeral Home. I waited five minutes and then walked in. Robert Ecker stood in a semi-dark room, hands folded before him as if in prayer. He was looking down at the body of David Parsons' wife. Hello, Ecker. Hello. Came by to pay my respects. Sure. Sure. Who is she, Ecker? What was that? Who is this girl? She isn't Dorothy Parsons. I know that much. Who is she? <laughs> we better talk about this. Yeah. Yeah, we better talk. Her name's Ellen. Her name was Ellen Myers. We're going to be married. I'm sorry. She was one of those only people that you find in this town. I mean, she worked a bit in pictures and drew and painted a little bit. I don't know how I met her. I just know that she was fresh and lovely and... She'd do anything for me. Or for old man Parsons. For me. She was mine. Everything else is his. She was mine. He blew up the other morning when I called up and said you were in town looking for David Jr. He said we had to steer you out. He didn't want you talking to anybody. So he arranged that she'd be there posing as Mrs. Parsons? He asked me to get someone. She was delighted with the idea. It was 
and a little game for her. Where's the real Mrs. Parsons? Home, I guess. I don't know. I'll find that out. Now, tell me who's the guy I shook hands with this afternoon who said he was David Parsons Jr.? I don't know his name. Someone the old man hired to play the part for. Then David Parsons is still missing. Yeah. Why all the cover-up? Why doesn't the old man want him found? He does want him found. He wants him found in the worst way. He's been turning the country upside down looking for him for a week now. There's something like 23 operatives from a private detective firm looking for him, but he doesn't want it to go to the police. He wants it out of the papers at all costs. Why? Parsons is going to merge with Little and Tennyson. You've heard of them? Yeah. The old man's got to take it easy. Heart attack. Parsons Jr. will get into the saddle when the merger happens. He'll take over the whole play. That is, of course, with the old man sitting down in Palm Springs dictating orders to him. In other words, old man Parsons wants his figurehead to be on deck clean and unsullied for the merger. That's it. What do you think happened to Junior? I don't have any idea. What happens to any of us who work for Parsons? We give him lip at first, we get mad at him. In the end, he shakes out all the dignity and honesty you might ever have, and he makes you his own personal robin. Look at me, Dollar. He got me to make my girl play all that out in front of you. Now she's dead, and I'm still a robot for her. Take it easy. And sure. How did you get on to Junior? Oh, he didn't look broken up. He was a pretty bad actor. He also gave some wrong answers about being off on a ship and so on. Hey, look. You don't have to say anything about talking to me. Oh, but I will. I'll tell Parsons you pumped it all out of me. We'll worry him a bit. He'll figure out some other way to stop you. I told you once before, darling. He'll break your heart. Now, here's our star to tell you about tomorrow's intriguing episode of the Callicles Matter. Tomorrow, we find out that Callicles was a Greek. Maybe the greatest one of them all. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. Written by John Dawson, it is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Be sure to join us tomorrow night, same time and station, for the next exciting episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. Roy Rowan speaking. (laughs) 